Only 10 wins again for Penn State football in 2024. Drew Aller lighting up some box scores and multiple All-Americans for the Nittany Lions. But some realistic expectations for Penn State this upcoming season. You are Locked On Nittany Lions, your daily podcast on the Penn State Nittany Lions, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Now, some people are going to listen to this, watch this and say, these are just Homer predictions. In reality, these are actually very attainable accolades for Penn State in 2024. This is Locked On Nittany Lions. I'm your host, Zach Seiko, and thanks so much for making us your first listen and watch. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section, your predictions. I'm going to have about six different topics here that go through the overall season, Drew Aller, expectations for potential All-Americans, and some other ones. You can add on to the list in the comments section. Maybe this acts as a part one to see you know, if we followed up with a part two or part three. But these are kind of the main goals that Penn State could should definitely achieve here and what I'm expecting from them in 2024. Let's jump into it with the 10 and 2 dilemma, if you will. Right? Penn State seems to go 10 and 2 every year, plays second fiddle to Michigan and Ohio State. But do they even get to 10 wins this year? Because this is a season that is going to be tougher and something that Penn State and anybody else, frankly, hasn't seen in the conference's history with the official expansion here now in 2024. But do they win 10 plus games? I think they go 10 and two. I've said this already. I've had a season predictions as far as how they will do throughout the schedule and which matchups. But to add on to this a little further, Penn State on paper is in an 11 and one football team. Yes, they are better than 11 of their opponents, except Ohio State. That's the only one. So they're better than USC. They're better than UCLA. They're better than Washington. They're better than West Virginia. Ohio State is the only one that they are not better than. So on paper, Penn State is an 11-1 team in 2024. But because this game is played on turf, it is played on grass. You are not playing it on paper. Therefore, there is reason for slip-up. And again, you are better than those teams in terms of the analytics, skill, roster construction. However, you play some of those games on the road. You have some of those games, not so convenient timing, right? With USC on the road, then there's the bye week. Then you go to Camp Randall a week later. This team is better than the 2023 version. But the 2023 team, may I remind you, yes, in the outside of Ole Miss, right? But then you were missing all those starters on defense and guys were taken out of the game early besides the point. But in the regular season, they went 10 and two. But that team lost to a perennial college football playoff contender and Ohio State's only other, only loss was to Michigan in the regular season. And they lost to that team by eight points. And then the eventual national, national champions, they only lost to them by nine points, right? So. If they were that close in 2023, ball bounces a different way in the horseshoe, right? That scoop and score fumble for Kalen King, right? After after the sack, right? But the Kalen King hold and Penn State scores on a touchdown, right? I, I could get into all the hypotheticals here, but that 2023 team was close to breaking through. And this 2024 team is better than that 2023 team. But this is the toughest schedule in recent memory. Uh, going back, I'd say further than a decade, right? And there is no measure to predict. This is all unprecedented as far as the schedule goes. Playing teams on the West Coast, there is no, there, there's nothing. You have no data point. You have no nothing from, from history to indicate how Penn State or how anybody will perform Traveling, and I know there's you know the inverse of this too. UCLA comes to Happy Valley, but Penn State has to go out to SoCal. How is that going to play into it? Is Penn State going to be able to adjust? I know they've done it for the Rose Bowl, but that's with a month of preparation and you're fully anticipating it. You are not playing a game the week before in the middle of a season, and then you still got to play more games behind that. That's your end all game, the Rose Bowl. That's it. That's all you have to prepare for. Now you got to prepare for a full season. Games before it, games after it, and these are still college kids at the end of the day, right? It's different in the NFL when you are, this is your job, this is your livelihood, 
are still students uh, for some that might not uh, necessarily still believe that with NIL and everything else going on. So because of that, Penn State can easily win or and could easily lose a game that they're supposed to win or maybe even two knocking that record to nine and three, right? So uh, 10 and two is a great record in this new landscape of college football. 10 and two is very respectable and carries a lot more weight than it did in years past where you just had to circle Michigan and Ohio State, especially recently over the past three, four years. But that's not the case anymore. You don't have two or three select games where you're like, yep, we got to put all the juice into this one. No, it's the entire schedule. There's eight, nine games where you're like, hey, this could be a toss up if Penn State doesn't play its cards right. Uh, expectations for Drew Aller. This is the kind of, a, a, again, an early prediction for what's going to happen in 2024. 4,000 passing yards, 35 passing touchdowns, a 60 completion percentage. No, 4,000 yards, 4, 4, 35, 40 touchdowns, I think, uh, passes are a little too unrealistic here. I'll, I'll, I'll dial it back a little bit. 60% completion percentage. I, I, would, I would expect Drew to at least have 60, maybe start to push to 65. I think Drew Aller throws for something in the neighborhood of 3,300 yards. Again, that's about a 700-yard increase compared to last season when he threw about roughly 2,600. So my expectations are tempered for as far as how Drew will light up the box score. And he'll have some very good games. Again, he threw for four touchdown passes, no problem. He threw for 300 yards in select games. So it's capable. For Penn State, though, the schedule is difficult in terms of travel, the increased competition and skill level, but maybe not necessarily the defensive prowess that they're going to go up against. No, Penn State faces some more lenient defenses compared to the likes of Ohio State, and Wisconsin. There's no Michigan this season on the schedule. There's no Oregon. There's no Iowa. There's no Nebraska. Penn State also practices against themselves. So they're going to have a top 10 in the nation caliber defense to work against day in and day out before Saturday comes along. But they'll play against USC, UCLA, Washington, Maryland, Illinois, Purdue, Minnesota, games where you can certainly pad the stat sheet there. And those first six defenses out, outside of Oregon, those first six defenses, including Penn State itself, are projected to finish inside the top 10 in the nation. That is right. Though The Big Ten is filled with amazing defenses for this upcoming season. So that, that's part of the reason why my expectations aren't a little higher for Drew. There's also this. You have not one, but two two future NFL running backs in Nicholas Singleton and Catron Allen. Bo Perbula will get more run in this offense, literally and figuratively, right? He's going to be used in select packages. Andy Kotelnicki loves to utilize two quarterback systems. I'm not saying they're splitting reps 50-50, but when you have a mobile quarterback like Bo Perbula, he was extremely underutilized last season. I, I think they're going to find a way to work his talents into the offense uh, a lot more. And Andy Kotelnicki is a run-first coordinator. If you see what he's done at Buffalo and most recently at Kansas, all the stats are there. The evidence is there. So now he's admitted that he will do whatever it takes to win. If that's running the ball 55, 60 times in a game, great. You have the assets to do it. If you need to throw the ball 50, 55 times a game, you have the asset in Drew Aller to do that. Wide receivers, a little bit of a different story, but you do have Tyler Warren, right? You did add Julian Fleming out of the transfer portal. So it's not unthinkable, but expect Penn State to certainly lean on that running game. That's just the way the offense is built. So with the roster that he has, I'm expecting a run first, run heavy team again. So that's going to lead to Katron Allen and Nicholas Singleton. Do Does Penn State have two? individual 1,000 yard rushers on this team. We're going to discuss that on the other side of this break. And today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you got to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has all the tools to help you find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you find professionals that you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new role but might be open to the perfect one. 
In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users don't visit other leading job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. So hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. And LinkedIn understands that small businesses are wearing tons of hats and might not have the time to devote to hiring. LinkedIn is constantly finding ways to make that process easier, quicker, and more intuitive. 2.5 million small businesses use LinkedIn for hiring. So become one of them. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. And if you're not already, become an everyday or subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lines on YouTube and wherever you get your podcast for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. Now, are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day long? Do you ever have to turn down the volume with all of that shouting? How about you make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel programmed for you each and every day to bring you the biggest sports stories without all of that screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, and it's all streaming 24-7 on YouTube and for free on the Amazon Fire TV channels app. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Two 1,000-yard rushers for Penn State between Allen and Singleton. Yes, absolutely. I have a lot of confidence in this one. They've come close as true freshmen, as true sophomores. And and here we are again, third year of football, better offensive coordinator, one that's certainly going to favor running the football, right? The ground game will be better. I, I know it certainly felt. Why was it so good? Or why was it so much better in 2022 with Mike Yersich compared to what it was in 2023 scheme coordinator tendencies, the addition of Julian Fleming. I I don't think enough people are estimating just how valuable Julian Fleming will be as a blocker. That was one of the reasons Penn state couldn't have those big chunk plays in the running game because the wide receiver blocking, and I know this is just one player, but that is how good Julian Fleming is in the running game. Aller's not going to run the ball a- as much either. And that I, that felt like a Mike Yersich thing. I really don't understand the design quarterback draws for your pocket passer as opposed to your running quarterback in Bo Prabula. And I understand that you don't want to tip your hand and be obvious, right? You, you want to conceal what you're going to throw at a defense here. But why Drew Aller was tucking and running the football like that last season, there is no way. There is no way that Drew Aller gets close to 60 rush attempts again. And that's counting for sacks taken. So Drew Aller was about 58, 59 true rush attempts because that's the way college football is statistically counted where you have sacks taken. And Nikodal Nicky is going to be smart. He's going to give some of those care. He's going to give those carries that went to Drew to players that definitely deserve them in Singleton and Allen. And then look at Kansas's stats from 2023 as a team. Top 15 in percentage of run plays called per game in the country. Top 15. Top 15 in the country in yards per rush. Top 10 in rush yards per game, eclipsing 200 yards per game. So you take the bulk of the production that's going to come from Singleton and Allen. You don't have a Trey Potts. You don't have an experienced veteran this time around to siphon any other yards. Both sing, and I have to preface it any other time, right? These expectations are all null and void if any of the, if any of these players get injured. So knock on wood here, right? So we're speaking from a full 12 game regular season. Singleton and Allen play full 12 games. They split the carries the way they have. They were dead even in how they split carries from a season ago. I fully expect the same thing here with a little bit more of a workload here. And Penn State, if they're going to, and winning teams run the football more. So take that situational awareness to it too. If Penn State's up by any amount other than maybe like three to seven points, but if Penn State's winning by you know, 10, 14, anything exceeding that, they're going to run the football more, meaning more opportunities, more carries, more production, better stats for both Singleton and Allen, especially with the way that they split the workload 50-50. So a thousand yard rushers for Allen and Singleton. Well, does that trickle over into the passing game and a thousand yard receiver for Penn State football? Absolutely not. 
Abs- absolutely no way. No way. And why it, it, it is just difficult to do this, first and foremost. I don't want to say it's easy to get 1,000 yards as, as a running back in college football, but it's a little more attainable than the, the receiving here. And let's, let's put it into perspective. Penn State has only had three 1,000-yard receivers in a season over the past decade. Maybe you can guess who those are. Chris Godwin, Allen Robinson, Jahan Dotson most, most recently. So when you put those names out there, right, there is not a single receiver on this team that compares to Allen Robinson in his prime at Penn State. Jahan Dotson, most recently in 2021, or Chris Godwin, right? The, the, and, and it's just difficult to do, may I remind you, because K.J. Hamler was really good in his time at Penn State, but he never eclipsed 1,000 yards in one season. I was surprised to kind of double check that too. K.J. Hamler never had an 1,000-yard season during his time in Happy Valley. So Trey Wallace, Julian Fleming, Liam Clifford, Amari Evans, let's throw Caden Saunders in here too, right? None of these guys are capable of, capable of it this season based on what we've talked about too, okay? So this is going to be a run-first team, a run-heavy team. If Penn State's playing with the lead, they're going to run some more. They're not going to put the football in the air. Plus, let's combine some other factors too in addition to two stud running backs. Aller's decision-making is, is going to skew that a little bit because he likes to protect the football. That's his presence. He doesn't. That's his preference. He doesn't put the football in harm's way, and he's also going to distribute the football pretty, I would say, evenly here. Allen Robinson, you know, was the guy, and Christian Hackenberg has talked about that now, that he's a full, you know, me, full media figure. Bill O'Brien said that, you know, said this too, and they've quoted Bill O'Brien saying, like, just get the football to Allen Robinson. They're really isn't that type of playmaker in the passing game at wide receiver. Now, Tyler Warren, that's a different story, but tight ends certainly don't, re- you know, don't reach 1,000 yards in, in a given season. But Aller's going to distribute the football evenly. He's going to protect it. There isn't a clear-cut number one wide receiver on this team. I'd lean Trey Wallace, right? That's the expectation is that Wallace kind of takes over for Keandre Lambert-Smith, but it could be Julian Fleming. Heck, It could be Amari Evans because of all the good things that I've heard about him eventually being that true number one wide receiver if he decides to break out this season. So any one of those guys, again, are there's going to be an even distribution and there is no clear, there's no Allen Robinson. There's no Chris Godwin type that is going to command the attention of the defenses. It's pretty, pretty even across the board here. And Andy Kotal Nicky's playing play calling tendencies. They're going to favor the running game. It's just not going to happen. But Penn State could certainly have multiple All Americans here. There are two players that certainly come to mind, and I'll tell you them next on the other side of this break. And today's episode is also sponsored by Yahoo Finance. Wouldn't it be great? if you could see all of your investment and retirement accounts in one place? Well, you can with Yahoo Finance. You can consolidate your views from multiple accounts into one hub and access the expert analysis you need to tend to your entire portfolio with confidence. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or you're looking for that extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you all the tools and all of the data you need in one place. They are the number one financial destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news, and analysis. Visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. Again, that's yahoofinance.com. How many All-Americans for Penn State in 2024? How many All-Conference players could be named uh, as Nittany Lions here? When it comes to All America recognition, I, I don't want to get ahead of myself here. I certainly did last year because I was not afraid to throw out Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen a, as All America picks. But I think Penn State does have two legitimate candidates here and guys that I think will end up being All Americans at the end of the season. Those players are 
one that I've already mentioned, but one's on the defensive side too. KJ Winston and Tyler Warren at, at tight end. Uh, I'll begin with KJ Winston here because Winston is finally getting the recognition he deserves. He is now being viewed as one of the best safeties in college football at, at the moment. Yeah, one of the best in the Big Ten, one of the best in the country, and one of the best draft prospects for the class of 2025. The stats back it up. The analytics back it up even more. More often than not, pro football focus, and I, I know where some people stand, you know, as far as PFF, but it is, a, it is a good measure to see the other side of the game that, you know, can't be seen directly every single play. It is a good measure to try to figure out who's having good games, great games, and also bad performances as well. But PFF, nine times out of 10, had Winston as not only Penn State's best defensive back last season, but also Penn State's best overall defender in nearly, like I said, almost every single game. Winston does not miss tackles. Winston doesn't miss tackles. There was not a missed tackle logged for him in the entire 2023 season. I fully believe that based on that metric, he should have a 99 tackle rating in the new college football video game that, that's set to be released this summer. He's great in man coverage. He's great in zone coverage. And to back up again, just how he is around the football, he led the team in tackles. A safety leading the team in tackles is pretty much something, especially when Penn State prides itself on being linebacker you. KJ Winston is the real deal. He is certainly and should be in the All-America conversation. And again, if he plays a full season, I fully expect him to be an all I mean, first team or second. First team's pretty lofty. Again, Caleb Downs moved into the Big Ten here, right? He's very good. But I think KJ Winston can be at least a second team All American. Same thing goes for Tyler Warren here. I've said it. I think that he can break school records for tight ends, single season and, and career. Now he won't that a thousand yard mark is, you know, don't don't measure tight ends by that. That is really tough to do here because Mike Kosicki never even did something like that. But Warren is a top five tight end in the country. And he is the guy in the room this time around. The reason Tyler Warren, right, was described as the best kept secret by CBS Sports 24 7, Josh Pate called him that. But now there's no more splitting reps for who was formerly the best kept secret in college football. And he had seven touchdowns, seven receiving touchdowns a season ago. Tyler Warren doesn't have to share the attention, the play calling, the reps, the production with Theo Johnson, Brenton Strange previously. Now, I know there's Andrew Rapplier, and I have high expectations for him. I think he can be a breakout candidate for this season, but respectively, right? He's not going to wow you and be the number one tight end in this offense. That is Tyler Warren. Khalil Dinkins is still there, right? There, there are a lot. There's you know impressive freshman phenom in Luke Reynolds, but Warren is ahead of all of them. And there's, there's a clear distance, right? Theo Johnson and Tyler Warren close together. Bretton Strange, right? The best tight end in the room for that respective season in 2022. Annie Kotelnicki will scheme to Tyler Warren in the offense, especially since you don't have that bona fide number one wide receiver. And Andy Kotelnicki has been an offensive line and a tight ends coach. He's been, that's his forte throughout his entire college football coaching career before he became an offensive coordinator, but he's always been an offensive line and tight ends guy. This is his specialty. So, don't be discouraged that Penn State, because it, it, it's very difficult to reach the All-America status. Penn State doesn't achieve it very often, right? So, but Penn State has a lot of very, very good players. So I named KJ Winston and I named Tyler Warren a, as those All-America talents. Penn State has other All-America talents still, even though they're not going to be recognized as All-Americans at the end of the season, because you need the stats. You need the workhorse opportunities. You need the production to reach that. Prime example, Nicholas Singleton and Katron Allen. They are never going to be All-Americans. They have All-America talent, but in this case, they are their own worst enemies because they split carries. They steal, they siphon stats away from one another. Combine them together into one running back, and this is a first-team All-America and probably a unanimous selection as well if you were to put them combine their talents into one running back what about abdul carter defensively similar situation to the running backs denied dennis sutton's on the other side there isn't just one premier pass rusher on defense there's there's two 
and, and those two are going to combine. They're going to split those pass rush pressures, those stats, which is great for the team, right? But in regards to the conversation around, hey, who's going to be an All-American? Yeah, they're, they're going to complement each other, and it's ultimately going to take away from what they do to be top uh, of, of the entire nation of college football. And don't forget, Abdul Carter is switching positions. I know that he's naturally gifted as far as rushing the quarterback, but he's played linebacker for you know since high school and, and now at the collegiate level, and he's switching. This is his first season as at defensive end, switching positions. I think it will take some time and not enough time. He won't have enough time to catch up and reach that level of being a first or second team All-American. As for all conference selection goes, you know, goes, Penn State's going to have plenty of them. Nicholas Singleton, Katron Allen will repeat. Drew Aller can certainly be a top three quarterback in the Big Ten here. J.B. Nelson on the offensive line. He's the best returning offensive lineman from a season ago. I've already mentioned him. Abdul Carter, deny Dennis Sutton. Throw Devon Ellis in there. I think Penn State had a top five rush defense. Devon Ellis was a big part of that, and he's back. Kobe King becomes your tackling machine he can be in all big 10 conference selection and then in the secondary okay so if kj winston is in an all america selection he, well he could be both right he will be both right if he's all american then he's also going to be all conference then there's aj harris coming in as the georgia transfer i have high expectations for him and that safety room is one of the best in the country if not the best and i know that's with respect to caleb downs and ohio state and what they have but jalen reed Zachy Wheatley, there's a reason King Mack transferred out. There are too many safeties, and that's a good thing for Penn State, too many quality safeties for Penn State. Winston, Reed, and Wheatley, with all what they their specialties and what they're able to do on defense, they are going to have a strong impact and be all-conference selections this upcoming season. It's going to do it for this edition of Locked On Nittany Lions. Again, let me know your predictions. If you have some different ones, or if you want to play off the ones that I've suggested here, Drowler stats, Penn State's record, All-American selections, and other, other stat predictions, they are welcome down in the comments. And thanks so much again for checking out this episode of Locked On Nittany Lions. If you enjoyed this conversation, leave a like on the show, share it with friends and family. Let me know your thoughts your predictions down in the comments section. Be a part of the conversation. And if you're not already, become an everydayer. Subscribe to Locked On Nittany Lions on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts for the latest conversations around your favorite Penn State sports teams. And don't forget, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On, plus the national shows covering each and every league. You can find Locked On Sports today, now available on YouTube and the free Fire TV channels app.